Well, good, good day to you all and welcome to this side event, which is part of the 13th session of the UN Conference of State Parties to the Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And it is special that we are hosting this event today, which is the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. The title of this side event is The Intersecting Human Rights Challenges facing women who have experienced leprosy and has been organized by the Leprosy Mission and Disabled Persons International in partnership with the Sasakawa Foundation and the United Nations Development Program, Laos PDR. Now we have American Sign Language interpreters working with us today. We are aware that international sign is the preference for UN meetings but we are very grateful for the support of our ASL interpreters and that we hope that between their excellent work and the live captions, which you can activate at the bottom of your screen, everyone will be able to follow our conversations over the next hour or so. By way of introduction, uh, I am the moderator of this side event. My name is Brent Morgan. I am the International Director of the Leprosy Mission, and I also serve as the President of ILEP, the International Federation of Anti-Leprosy Associations. And for your information, this side event is being recorded and will be available for viewing at a later time, and we will provide details as to where and how you can access it. Leprosy or Hansen's disease still exists. Every two minutes, a new case of leprosy is diagnosed. It is estimated that up to 4 million people are living with a leprosy related disability, but we don't know this for certain as the data is not currently being collected. New male cases of leprosy are nearly twice those of new female cases diagnosed. And this may be the result in part of women not accessing health services and being diagnosed as often as men are. Leprosy has often been seen as a medical condition and persons who have experienced leprosy and with leprosy related disabilities have not always been part of the disability community. And for this reason, we are very pleased to be working with Disabled Persons International to ensure that persons who have experienced leprosy are included in the wider disability movement. The object of, of this event is to discuss the barriers faced by women who have experienced leprosy when accessing their human rights particularly their rights with regards to health, livelihoods, and family. And during these times of COVID-19, some of these barriers have increased further still. We will also discuss how the UNCRPD framework can support women who have experienced leprosy in addressing and overcoming these challenges. So today we have a panel of six speakers, including three women who have experienced leprosy. I'm going to introduce and then invite each of these panelists to speak. And after all the panelists have spoken, we will open up for a time of questions. If you would like to ask a question of the panelists, can you please post these in the chat facility of the, of the room? and we will endeavor to have your questions answered. So I would now like to introduce our first speaker, who is Ms. Alice Cruz. Uh, Ms. Cruz is the special uh, UN Special Rapporteur on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Persons Affected by Leprosy and Their Families. Ms. Cruz has just begun her second three-year term in what in 2017 was a new UN mandate. Ms. Cruz has worked widely in the leprosy field uh, as an academic and researcher, 
She's worked in civil society as well in Brazil. And um, Ms. Cruz, Alice, uh, you are very welcome, and I would like to invite you to speak to the meeting now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brent. Um, first of all, uh, I wish to greet everybody that has joined this side event. And um, I would like also to give special thanks to the organizers of the event and to my fellow speakers. Um, I will apologize to Mr. Pradeep Bajival, but I would like to highlight the very important role that my fellow speakers, Ms. Everastus, Ms. Hanaware, Ms. Konju, and Mr. Timalcina have at their countries regarding uh, fighting for systemic change. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank um, to thank them for the continuous advice and guidance they have been providing me as special rapporteur. Well, I believe that um, in order for us to start discussing the multiple barriers women who have experienced leprosy face, perhaps we should uh, start by clarifying some of the intersecting categories that produce multiple discrimination against women, girls, and older women who have experienced leprosy. Um, one obvious category to start with is of course gender. We know that gender is in fact the product of power relations, or as I prefer to say, the product of subordination, meaning with this the historical devaluation of some groups of people under hierarchical social structures that by producing and reproducing an unequal distribution of power severely constrain their autonomy and participation. I do not, I must uh, confess, I do not feel comfortable with expressions such as uh, vulnerable women. Women are not vulnerable. Women may live in situations of vulnerability that are the product of unequal social um, and power relations. Um, but I would also like to point out to the fact that the embodiment of womanhood is also anchored in inequities and is far from giving rise to a universal experience. Reason for which we need to pay close attention to all the axes of oppression that intersect in the lives of women who have experienced leprosy. One of such axes is the fact that leprosy is mainly a label that has been used to exclude. It is labeling and not leprosy itself that is at the root of leprosy-related discrimination. Persistent harmful stereotypes related to leprosy include religious beliefs, uh, the idea that leprosy is the result of sins committed in current or past lives by the person who experiences leprosy or by his or her family members. The idea that leprosy is the result of sorcery, possession by evil spirits and other harmful stereotypes. But I would also, also like to call your attention to the fact that we still live with a very harmful legacy coming from the late 19th century modern medicine that created the idea of a highly contagious disease, which is in fact not true. Harmful stereotypes about leprosy lead to what I call informal segregation, meaning the fact that persons who experience leprosy continue to face widespread ex exclusion within the household, at the community level, uh, in, regarding work opportunities and rights. 
Another important axis of oppression is the fact that hundreds of years of segregation, forced in institutionalization practiced by states' policies, structural and interpersonal violence, formal discrimination. I would like to recall everybody that there are still more than 100 discriminatory laws in place against persons who experience leprosy. It is also a persistent institutionalized discrimination at state services. And of course, the persistence of substantive discrimination leading to the fact that many persons who um, experience leprosy live in uh, poverty or extreme poverty. I would also like to recall you that there are still up to 2,000 leprosy segregation places active in the world today. As Brent mentioned, the narrow understanding of leprosy as a biological condition has caused highly dam damaging gaps in policy making, meaning that active citizenship, independent living, and autonomy, economic autonomy, have been broadly seen as secondary to public health goals. Well, as um, the organizers of the event asked us to, to mention the barriers regarding health, family, and livelihoods, I would like to start um, by uh, mentioning some of the institutional and social barriers that women who experience leprosy face regarding their right to the highest sustainable standard of health. As Brent already mentioned, unfortunately, for many decades, biomedicine has, interpre has interpreted this discrepancy between uh, leprosy cases in women and men as uh, biological, biological um, uh, feature. When in fact, women who experience leprosy continue to face uh, several institutional barriers to diagnosis. I will just mention two, discriminatory legal frames and the gender of the healthcare workforce in primary care services, which in many countries means that women uh, who experience leprosy will have uh, severe problems um, in engaging with health services. Non-addressed social barriers include um, the low status assigned to women, which is at the root of women's widespread self-concealment of the disease, but also the widespread dependence of women's access to health services on third-party authorization. Regarding health, I would also like to mention how the commodification of global health has a severe impact on the sexual and reproductive rights of women who experience leprosy due to the fact that the drugs that are used to treat leprosy and its reactions are obsolete and have severe side effects that compromise women's well-being. Regarding family, uh, I would like to mention some of the harmful practices and violent violations that women continue to experience on the grounds of leprosy. Driving out from the household without financial resources to ensure survival. Abuse within the household as a result of women experiencing difficulties in performing the role expected of them due to pain, chronic pain, and other uh, disabilities caused by leprosy. Psychological, physical, and sexual violence within the household and lack of resources to fight against discrimination, including lack of access to justice. And separation for, from children, which was a widespread reality during uh, the time in which states uh, implemented forced segregation, abuse from medical workers. I should mention that although rare, uh, I have received reports of women being told by medical doctors to end their pregnancies due to leprosy. And this is, these are recent reports. 
But I should also mention that women with a personal experience of leprosy are at the forefront of fighting gender-based discrimination. Regarding livelihoods, a substantial number of women who have experienced leprosy are not economically independent and their family is still the main source of income. Traditional role attributed to women include household activities, unpaid care work of family members, agricultural work, among others. And when women are employed, they usually are um, uh, left to unreliable casual labor, low wages, and unsafe and degrading working conditions. But their work still falls mainly outside the formal economy without an entitlement to social security benefits. But again, I must also mention that many women who have experienced leprosy in the face of lack of equal opportunities, as well as lack of state's policies that can promote access to work and training opportunities have developed entrepreneurship strategies and organized cooperatives leading the efforts towards the socio-economic empowerment of their communities. I will not deepen the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 because I um, am sure that the next speakers can also uh, provide important testimonies in that regard. But I would also, but I would just like to mention that the COVID-19 crisis only exacerbated already existing social inequities and stru structural violence and aggravated the situation that I have described regarding access to health, family and livelihoods. But perhaps you may wish to know that older women who have experienced leprosy and that still live in institutions where they were forcibly segregated by the state are at risk because some public administration have turned parts of these former colonies into field hospitals for COVID-19 patients. Well, to conclude, of course, the CRPD is without a doubt the best framework we have for enforcing and guaranteeing the human rights of women who have experienced leprosy. I would like to recall that persons who have experienced leprosy must be recognized as persons with disabilities in accordance with articles one and two of the CRPD on the grounds of not only physical impairments and the multiple barriers imposed by society to their full participation, but also on the grounds of discrimination based upon harmful stereotypes on leprosy itself. The CRPD provides us with a change of paradigm and also with the models for inclusive equality that embraces a substantive model of equality based on redistribution to address inequalities, elimination of stigmatization and promotion of dignity, full and effective participation and accommodation of differences, all very important for persons who have experienced leprosy. But, and now to conclude, we need first to be very, uh, to pay cl close attention to two particular aspects uh, related to uh, leprosy and leprosy related barriers to participation. One is general and regards access to disability rights. Structural and widespread barriers in the access of persons who have experienced leprosy with invisible physical impairments to disability benefits is a widespread reality still which relates very much to the fact that eligibility criteria, criteria are still very, still very much based on a very limited medical assessment. The second point uh, is specific to women and regards participation. 
there is still widespread uh, low participation of women who have experienced leprosy in civil society organizations, health services, decision-making processes and institutional body, um, bodies, which enhances the weaknesses of the responses from state monitoring systems and policies to map and address discrimination and violence on the grounds of leprosy. To uh, conclude, enforcing the provisions of the CRPD for the specific case of persons who have experienced leprosy is very much needed and would contribute to a very much needed paradigmatic shift from traditional medical and charity based approaches to the enforcement of de facto equality. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alice, for your excellent presentation and such a rich content in it. And uh, it's given us plenty of things to think about. I would uh, just remind everybody that we will be having a time of questions at the end. So if you would like to post a question, uh, please do so uh, in the chat room and we will try our best to answer these. I'll have the panel answer these later on. So our next speaker is Ms. Lilibeth Everastis from Nigeria. Um, Ms. Everastis is a legal practitioner who runs her own legal practice in Lagos, Nigeria. She is a member of the ILEP Persons Affected by Leprosy Advisory Panel. And Ms. Lilibeth, it's my pleasure to welcome you today and invite you to present to the meeting now. Thank you, Lilibeth. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you very much. Um, also, thank you all that have joined us online today. It is indeed a great privilege to be here representing women affected by Hansen disease, otherwise known as um, leprosy across the world. When a person is diagnosed with Hansen disease, such a person is often seen as being cursed by God and as such is, is being forbidden from associating with other people. Then stigmatization becomes his or her portion in life. Needless to say, women affected by leprosy, no needless to say rather, women face institutional challenges in countries like Nigeria. Women can have their right to education limited. They can lose their right to inheritance. And most often are even seen as um, a chattel to their husband. Having this in mind, we can imagine how poorly a woman can be treated upon being diagnosed with leprosy. Many have been seriously dehumanized, kicked out of their homes and community, rejected, and even silenced for life. I was diagnosed with leprosy during my same age. I was called a leper by a woman in the village and was asked to leave the village. That was derogatory, hateful, and a very sad way to realize that I have leprosy. No one should ever use the term leper. Later, I was taken to the leprosy referral hospital and was admitted for treatment. I was still eager to go to school and learn. And so I was encouraged to use the on-site library where I studied hard. All thanks to God, I passed my exams and was given admission to read law in the University of Lagos. Where, but when I was there, I faced stigma and discrimination on campus because of my noticeable look, which ranges from poor blinking of my eyes, a slope mouth, claw fingers, and uh, even also because then I had astromalitis of the foot. Most students, 
most of my fellow students wondered why I should be in such a prestigious profession. But my intelligence and determination meant that I stood out. Now, I am a practicing lawyer in Nigeria. And in court, I can feel insecure about my appearance. I find it difficult to face the judge or the jury, even without difficulties like mine. It is hard for a woman to stand in the court and speak with confidence. I had to overcome this odd in order to be successful in my livelihood. I do not want women or girls who have experienced Hansen disease, otherwise known as leprosy, to go through the same challenges I have. Invoking the section, the article 24 of the CRODP, which states that a person with disability should be guaranteed the right to inclusive education at all levels, regardless of age, without discrimination, and on the basis of equal opportunity. Are women affected by leprosy? Are they given this opportunity? Women, women with leprosy-related disability should be given the opportunity to acquire education regardless of their disability. There's an adage that says, when you train a woman, you have trained a nation. This will enhance and ensure their economic independence and as well as reducing stigma and discrimination and even low self-esteem. I call on government, both national and subnational, to make sure that there is a strict implementation of the provision of the CRPD. Without education, the chances of accessing a reasonable livelihood can become close to nil. Extra efforts must be made by government to ensure girls with leprosy-related disabilities can ensure, can access their education. The maximum effort will not be enough. The minimum effort will not be enough, rather. Look at um, Article 25 of the CROPD. Also specify that persons with disability have the right to the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health and rehabilitation without discrimination. Women that have experienced leprosy-related disabilities faces a lot of challenge to assess the standard of health due to lack of information, lack of money, lack of transportation from rural area. They have to endure these hard lives with disability that could have been prevented. I appeal to government at all levels to provide excellent standard of acceptable health facilities that women can access without difficulties. Many of us are old with little education and may not understand the long or rigorous travel or administrative procedures that are often needed to assess this health care. Good standard of living and good health cannot exist without one another. They are interwoven. Article 8 of the same CRPD enjoins government to raise awareness of the rights of persons with disability. This is very important. Many of our challenges are related to stigma. It is deeply engrounded in our communities. Government must help us to send the right information out about Hansen disease. We have to change the ugly narratives that surround this disease and thereby changing our lives positively, allowing us economic autonomy, inclusion in our communities, and a lot of more good lives. Lastly, in conclusion, I believe that through the whole CPRD 
when work, women who have experienced Hansen disease can achieve their rights. The tools, are, the tools we need are enshrined in these conventions. And so we appeal to the government across the world to make sure that the CROPD is a reality and a force for a positive change in our lives. Thank you for taking your time to listen to me. And I encourage you women affected by leprosy to hold their head high. Together we are into this fight and together our voices will be heard. Thank you. Lilibeth, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Very, very, uh, I think very moving for many of us and to, to, to hear your story about standing in front of that court in that courtroom was a wonderful story and uh, congratulations on your courage in doing so and perseverance. Uh, thank you. Thank you for presenting to us today. Yeah. Thank you. Our next uh, speaker is uh, Maya Ranavari. Uh, Maya is from India. She is representing Disabled Persons International in is, and is from APAL, the Association of People Affected by Leprosy. Uh, Maya is, uh, will be uh, helped with her presentation today by Jai Shari Kunju, who will be uh, speaking uh, on, be on behalf of Maya and doing so in English. So could I invite uh, both Maya and Jai Shari to uh, to the floor now, and we look forward to what you have to present to us. Maya, do you have any words to say? Good evening, everyone. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maya. And it's really a privilege to present on your behalf. Uh, and I'm, I really admire you for the kind of work you do. So thank you for the opportunity, uh, Brent uh, and Maya. Uh, so Maya, Maya's presentation is about challenges faced by women affected by leprosy in the leprosy colonies in India in accessing rights to health, livelihoods and family, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now it's not a hidden fact that owing to the gender women, women in general face double discrimination than the male counterparts. Women face double burden of work, household work in addition to the outside paid work, and uh, in fact, household work which continues to remain unpaid, lack of rights in family property, and preference almost always given to a male child, whether it's at birth or soon after birth, uh, food or health or education or livelihood. It's always a male child that gets all the opportunities and this continues forever. But with a disability, a woman faces further discrimination at multiple levels that women in general, especially in a country which has deep rooted social and religious beliefs, that continues to look at disability as a punishment uh, for sins of the past life. Women with disabilities have lower marriage prospects as they are not seen as capable of raising a family and fulfilling family duties in spite of the fact that we have in our own country and elsewhere, several women with disabilities that have shattered these stereotypes and not only have succeeded in career, but also lived happy married lives. However, when we talk specifically about leprosy, the problems of social stigma and ostracism are more prominent than the disease itself or any other disability that we know, given the misconceptions about the cause, methods of transmission and treatment of leprosy. This is why people affected by leprosy continue to live in leprosy colonies around the world, even in the 21st century. We have around 850 colonies in India itself, marginalizing over 200,000 plus people continue to live in these colonies. Further, there are very few people affected by leprosy 
who have been fully integrated in the society and are open about being leprosy cured. Not everyone integrated in the society is open about it. And with 60% of the cases in the world being reported in India, this is another reason why leprosy cases are increasing as people don't get themselves checked until it's too late as they are fearful of people, others, neighbors, friends, finding out about it. Most importantly, leprosy is a neglected disability and very rarely would you hear the voices of people affected by leprosy at international disability platforms. It's only in the past few years, thanks to organizations like DPI, the Nippon Foundation and the Leprosy Mission itself, that we have got some visibility, but still we have a long way to go. So women affected by leprosy, living in leprosy colonies, in poverty and deprivation, having little or no education, owning to their gender and stigmatized because of leprosy, face much more discrimination at multiple levels than their female counterparts, whether with or without disability. Now, looking at the discriminatory laws, we also need to look at the right-based approach towards these laws. People affected by leprosy and their families living in leprosy colonies generally lack knowledge about their rights and provisions under the law. Very few have knowledge and information and women affected by leprosy among them are even fewer. DPI, with support from the Nippon Foundation, has been conducting capacity building workshops and educating on right-based approaches. The CRPD framework and disability laws since 2014, uh, and uh, there's a mandate to integrate leprosy uh, with the disability sector and work has already started happening in a big way. Though in recent times, some laws like the Lepers Act 1898 have been repealed, there still are 106 discriminatory laws in India that need to be amended. A summary of some of them, health, multiple drug therapy drug is available free, for free, but other medical costs are not free or subsidized. People affected by leprosy are often shunned by doctors and Life Insurance Corporation uh, Act of 1956 still mandates higher premium rates to be charged from people affected by leprosy in spite of uh, you know, it being not a disease that it's the disease which is curable. Livelihoods. If you look at livelihoods, many employers misuse existing employment laws to terminate services of persons who are diagnosed with leprosy, although some laws deny right of movement, rights to political participation, rights to work, and have provisions for segregation, which affects their access um, and also rights to livelihood. There's another uh, couple of uh, laws on land rights. People affected by leprosy who live in the leprosy colonies do not have land rights and they're constantly under the fear of eviction. Few local governments have issued uh, land ownership documents in the name of residents, but the instances of this are very few. Recently passed uh, laws, uh, personal laws, uh, there's a bill uh, called as a uh, personal laws amendment bill, which was passed in 2018 omits leprosy as a ground for divorce, which is a good thing. There was uh, earlier that one could be, one could divorce their spouse if uh, it was found out later that the person had leprosy, which is a great uh, reform. But the practice of the law still needs to be seen, whether it's, you know, the law might have been removed, but whether people are really following that or not. Now, moving to COVID-19 and grassroots challenges. COVID-19 has affected people from all walks of life and all ages. However, it's also true that vulnerable and marginalized communities are at a higher risk, such as people affected by leprosy. Now with health focus shifting to COVID-19, access to health services was an issue during lockdown. As leprosy wards in civil hospitals in every district were closed. And uh, this led to several issues. Uh, for example, leprosy 
affected cured people with ulcer and you know general term used could be ulcer patients ulcer patients were not being given dressing for their wounds and they were not being treated drugs were not being made available for those who came you know sometimes traveling long distances maintaining personal hygiene including hand washing was also a challenge given deformities you know uh, disabilities ulcers etc cracked and dry skin and lack of soap and sanitizers due to poverty and uh, especially so for women affected by leprosy from leprosy affected leprosy families though leprosy wards have opened now the situation has created a gap in health service and needs for the people affected by leprosy now coming to livelihoods the social and economic effects of covid 19 led to loss of livelihoods and people affected by leprosy and their families therefore have been pushed further into poverty because these are the last people to get support in many instances many women affected by leprosy and women from families that have had leprosy lost their jobs for example uh, jobs as domestic maids because of the pandemic in the covid-19 situation with all people losing livelihoods people affected by leprosy especially women will be at the bottom of the pyramid to get back their livelihoods others will always get more preference and thus covid-19 has made it more difficult for women affected by leprosy from accessing livelihood opportunities coming to how family interactions happen covid-19 has had a negative impact towards leprosy in general but led to slightly higher discrimination towards women affected by leprosy this could be attributable attributed to the archaic views towards leprosy as well as their gender with schools closed many families don't have the required facilities such as laptops or smartphones and internet to provide education for the children also many of these families with more than one child often have to have only one smartphone through which only one child can access online class per time resulting in other child or children missing out on education also parents are not that educated invariably uh to uh, be able to homeschool their children this is creating a lot of stress for women affected by leprosy as they are the primary people to take care of children alongside the household chores food insecurity lack of education and livelihoods has been a worrying issue for the family social distancing recommendations have also led to further isolation of leprosy communities with limited interactions now during lockdown some positive things also did happen food grains and necessity items were provided by the government in many cases several non governmental organizations private individuals and also organizations uh, you know like companies distributed ration grocery items and hygiene and sanitation kits and organized community kitchens now post lockdown also patients are getting dressing materials and volunteer organizations are providing self care kits and the leprosy wards and referral centers have now started opening let's look at the next thing what we need to look at is what about collaboration government is providing health camps post lockdown in india and grassroots organizations such as association of people affected by leprosy are taking awareness programs to the people affected by leprosy and their families uh some of the immediate steps that uh, could be taken and these are recommendations government could take certain steps provide soft loan and job opportunities to women affected by leprosy who directly or indirectly lose or lost their livelihood due to covid-19 provide various vocational skill based training programs whether technical or non technical which will increase their job prospects provide gender sensitive interventions to address existing health and family problems including psychological support and guidance especially during the pandemic additionally awareness should be created on difference between covid-19 and leprosy considering that 95% people are naturally immune to leprosy unlike covid-19 
create gender related uh, uh, understanding another aspect could be uh, that the government could be involved in is advocacy unfortunately challenges faced by women affected by leprosy have rarely been on the agenda more attention needs to be given to the issues and challenges faced by them women with leprosy related disabilities must equip themselves with the knowledge and the crpd tools and women with leprosy related disabilities must align their advocacy initiatives with women with other disabilities so that the thrust can be given to the cause to strengthen the call for leave no one behind with this i end uh, maya's uh, presentation thank you so much thank you so much Thank you to Maya and thank you, Jay Sheree, for presenting Maya's uh, words. And uh, yeah, some just some really great things in there for us to think about, and particularly the challenges around COVID for 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 people who have experience with leprosy. Uh, Jay Sheree, I'd actually ask you to stay on now, please, because you are our next speaker. Yes, thank uh, you. Jay Shari is the CEO of IBAS Global, a consulting firm that provides training and coaching for accountancy and financial services. Ms. Jai Shari has a science degree and is a qualified accountant. Uh, she is a woman affected by leprosy and is very active in supporting the global community of persons affected by leprosy uh, through board membership on a number of organizations. So Jai Shri, uh, welcome in presenting your own words this time. We look forward to what you're about to share with us. Thank you so much, Ben, for the opportunity. Um, I would like to start off with a personal story. And uh, I would call this the story of Sambhavna or possibility. My story takes us to a leprosy colony on the outskirts of Anantpur, a small prosperous town in South India. This is where I met this young girl of 19 in the course of being part of a documentary film on leprosy. The daughter of an unskilled worker earning about $3.5 a day, the girl had led an idyllic life till she was about 13. Uh, she loved to hang out in the garden patch attached to her small house, playing with her dog and the neighborhood children. And then one day she fell ill. Years of visits to doctors later, she was informed that she had leprosy. Poverty, ignorance, and family circumstances, coupled with a medical system that was ill-equipped to diagnose her disease on time, left her almost crippled with uh, clawed hands, uh, dropped foot, and ulcers that refused to heal. At age 19, she seemed burdened with, the, with fear and sadness. And that is why she stood out uh, for me in a crowd of several people in the colony. Someone so young uh, with a forlorn air about her. Long past leaving the colony, I continued to stay in touch with her. And uh, my dream then for her was that she uh, gets to study and she uh, gets to have a job and she gets to live a life of dignity. And that was very important for me. Now, in the common parlance uh, used uh, in the word cure or treatment and care, this young girl was already cured of the disease, having been treated with tablets that killed off the leprosy causing bacteria. Now, a cured individual is considered free of disease. And thus, the health system must therefore have no further obligation of treating a cured individual, right? That's how it looks. However, the ground reality of leprosy is quite different. A patient of leprosy can be cured of it, but live with what looks like leprosy for the rest of his or her life. The young girl needed more care to bring her out of the condition of, I would call it as unwellness. She was thus sent away to a rehabilitation center where she underwent multiple surgeries to bring her limbs back to normalcy. When I went to visit her at this center, 
she looked hopeful and happy. Uh, and in that center, I even heard the health workers call her Lady Diana, uh, because Lady Diana had in fact visited the center in Hyderabad. So there were pictures of uh, Lady Diana there. And that was because this young woman loved to dress up and she loved putting on makeup. Uh, and this was a whole new girl from the one I had met earlier. In the few years that passed, I have been, I had been reminding her of her future, uh, that she should have a life that gives her livelihood and she should, you know, create opportunities for her own self-confidence by having a job, et cetera, et cetera. So I would talk to her on the phone in between. During the COVID-19 lockdown, so it's like four years have passed uh, along uh, this time, uh, she agreed to resuming her studies with support from volunteers who were arranged to teach her. And before reaching out the laptop arranged for her, friends in the work of leprosy went ahead to visit her in her hometown. And I received some very disturbing pictures of this girl. Over those years that I was imagining she was doing well, her condition had deteriorated. Her limbs were ulcerated badly. She was no longer able to walk. As to whether she can take care of herself or even find uh, herself a life partner, let alone tend to a child should she become a mother, seemed almost next to impossible. I have a sense of uh, helplessness for her loss. Uh, she would, however, drag her tired body to live on for decades because leprosy does not kill. But the spirit of the woman in her is long past dead, perhaps. Now, who or what caused the death of the possibility of the young girl in my story? I cannot ascribe cause to any one individual or to one system or uh, point to a particular cause. Um, well, cutting through another socioeconomic strata is my own story. At 20, leprosy did devastate me both psychologically and emotionally and to a small extent physically as it left me with a clawed hand and loss of sensation and weakness in one arm. However, I recovered. The possibility of living a normal life, professional and personal, rose out of the advantages that I have had, first by my birth, into the family I was born into, followed by the kind of education that I was privileged to get. So this brings me to the end of the person stories of two women who have had experiences of leprosy, some bit similar, and then the rest of it is very dissimilar. Now, I would like to move your attention to the obvious inequities faced by women in general, more so if these women are poor and not educated with no means of livelihood. Poor women in India are known to first feed their children and men using the money they have in hand for medical needs of these others, and perhaps neglect to nourish their bodies and even bear the brunt at times of physical and emotional violence silently. Coupled with disability, and if particularly those caused by leprosy, a disease of neglect, both by the state's educational and medical system as it exists today, and the unrelenting, sustained Stained an unshakable stigma about this age old disease existing in our society. A woman's life can at best be called or described as unbearable. Left with the aftermath of a technically cured disease that leaves behind telltale signs that include ulcer wounds, fragile bones, disabled limbs, and nerve reactions, these women are at the precipice of extinction as human beings whose lives even matter. We really have something serious to consider here. Should women with disability caused due to leprosy, due to additional disadvantage of living in a world that provides at times men with privileges and advantages over these women, be therefore provided additional attention from the systems of the state parties we also need to consider the debilitating impact that special circumstances like the outbreak of pandemic could have had on these women. I was just imagining, you know, the physical uh, uh, issues of travel. Uh, for example, a young boy could just jump into a you know vehicle and take a ride, but 
generally in India, we tend to protect girls much more because of various reasons, right? So perhaps impact of lockdowns, lack of access to food, sanitation, transportation, job opportunities could have and is still causing untold miseries to these, I would have to say, unfortunate people. Now, through the amazing opportunity that we have through the Leprosy Mission and the Disabled People International and also the Nippon Foundation, I would like to bring attention to the state parties of various nations, including my own, to consider creating a separate category of a minority status for these women with such multiple disadvantages in order to ensure that these women are not left at the mercy of their fate. Rather, that the special status allows for programs and policies that support these women for their livelihood, for their treatment, transportation, assistive devices for perhaps mobility or accessibility, and mental health services, which is very critical, while ensuring that respect and dignity and a chance to happiness and to live a life fully useful is still theirs to create. If I may appeal, I do request, if we could look at the disease leprosy as not one just caused by bacteria, but one perpetuated by the state's neglect that may include lack of nutrition, lack of education and awareness, and lack of sensitizing communities of the complex manifestation of the disease so that no one in the system affected by it is left debilitated even when they are declared as cured. And it's indeed uh, heartening that CRPD provides uh, states with a legally binding structure to ensure that lives and rights of people with disabilities are appropriately protected generally and more specifically in the face of COVID-19 pandemic. I appeal to the state parties to take heed of recommendations of the CRPD in ensuring schemes are created to fulfill on obligations to the category of women with disabilities and to include women with disabilities caused due to leprosy as those needing very specific care and attention. And this, if we are to avoid crisis management of having to deal with a population of women who were left behind with no possibilities, no sambhavna whatsoever to make their life to work. With this, I would like to close uh, my talk and I'm thankful of the opportunity given to me to make my presentation. Thank you so much. Jay Sheree, thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Very inspiring. Uh, a couple of things that you said in your presentation, extinction, talking about extinction as human beings. Uh, very, very powerful stories that you shared. And so thank you so much for your presentation today. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker, unfortunately, we had uh, our next speaker, Dr. Catherine Pyong from the UN Development, uh, UN Na United Nations Development Program in Laos PDR has fallen ill. And in her place, we have Mr. Pradeep Bhagaval, who is a colleague of Dr. Pyong's from the UNDP program, who will now speak. Uh, Pradeep is, uh, has a, a wide experience in both in, well, in government, in UN agencies, and also in civil society and has formerly served as the Disability Commissioner for the State of Karnataka in India. Pradeep, uh, I'd ask if you could read Dr. Pyong's statement now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brent. Uh, very good evening from uh, Laos, Vienchan. Uh, it's an absolute delight to co-host this event. Thank you for this great opportunity also to be on this online platform with such distinguished speakers. Women and girls with disabilities face significantly more barriers in public and private spheres in accessing their fundamental rights that are guaranteed by the respective national constitutions and human rights treaties such as CRPD. Women with leprosy related disabilities are among the minority groups among persons with disabilities who are facing exclusion on account of prevailing stigma 
and societal beliefs about leprosy. They face multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination, often leading to limits on their right to health, livelihood, education, economic opportunities, social interaction, and access to justice. The United Nations Partnership for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities is a unique partnership that brings together UN entities such as the national governments, organization of persons with disabilities, and broader civil society organizations in advancing the rights of persons with disabilities. Jayshree was talking about some measures which the state parties should take. Perhaps UNPRDP is a befitting a platform to take these things forward because they directly work with the national governments, creating one common platform for UN agencies and national governments to work together. The UNPRDP recognizes the importance of addressing the rights of the most underrepresented and marginalized groups such as women with leprosy related disabilities. It is still shocking to know, as Dr. Alice has said, there are still 128 discriminatory laws globally and discriminating against persons with leprosy related disabilities from enjoying political rights, economic equality, and social justice on an equal basis with other citizens. Now coming to the CRPD, Article 6 of the CRPD is one of the cornerstones of the convention that actually reinforces the non-discriminatory approach in respect of women and girls with disabilities. This provision should become a guiding principle for the state parties to take into account multiple discrimination faced by women with leprosy-related disabilities. Article 16 clearly establishes the responsibility of the state parties to provide legal protection against all forms of discrimination on the grounds of disability. The principles and guidelines on elimination of discrimination against persons affected by leprosy and their family members were adopted by the Human Rights Council in 2010. They, in reality, reflect the essence and spirit of the CRPD. They emphasize the state's primary role to guarantee the rights that are enshrined in the CRPD. There is an immediate need for the governments of leprosy endemic countries to raise awareness about the principles and guidelines and involve persons with leprosy-related disabilities in its implementation. It is certainly a huge challenge for persons affected by leprosy and their family members to combat stigma and discrimination that has been existing since thousands of years. And therefore, the situation warrants a systematic and a very multi-sectoral approach to uphold the human rights and dignity of persons with leprosy-related disabilities. That should include governments, both at the national and local level, civil society organizations, including organizations of persons with disabilities, the United Nations, aid agencies, and most important of all, persons with leprosy-related disabilities themselves. There are instances of women with leprosy-related disabilities being elected as local government representatives in India, which has the highest prevalence of leprosy in the world. This is one of the finest examples of women empowerment, and the state parties to the CRPD should ensure the voices of women with leprosy-related disabilities are heard on local, national, and global platforms such as this, that is a conference of the state parties. The national disability legislation of leprosy endemic countries should clearly recognize persons with leprosy related disabilities as one of the underrepresented group so that inequality is not perpetuated, something that JC was talking just a few minutes ago. In line with the United Nations disability inclusion strategy, UNDP in law PDR has been working closely with organizations of persons with disabilities and we do have a special focus on groups that are underrepresented. Issues regarding women and girls with disabilities are addressed through joint programs by UN entities in areas related to social protection. <clears throat> the submission made by the International Federation of Anti-Leprosy Associations to the 12th pre-session of the CRPD states that Lao PDR is one of the low endemic countries and that there are around 5,000 persons with leprosy related disabilities. While there is no official data on women with leprosy related disabilities, 
UNDP would like to draw the attention of the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, with whom we work very closely, the Lower Disabled People's Association, and also the Lower Women's Union, which is equivalent to the Ministry of Women here, towards issues regarding women with leprosy-related disabilities and the need for collecting disaggregated data. <clears throat> Gender equality is central to UNDP's work in Lower PDR, and the human rights of underrepresented persons underrepresented women and girls with disabilities will continue to be an issue of priority in our efforts to achieve disability inclusive SDGs so that no one is left behind. Before I conclude, I just want to tell the audience that though I am from the United Nations Development Program, I have been appointed as the Chief Technical Advisor to the Ministry of Home Affairs. I'm not sure if there has been any other incident before where a um, uh, person from the Ministry of Home Affairs has been talking on a leprosy forum like this. Now, this is exactly what is required. It's not just the business of Ministry of Health, but supporting and promoting the rights of persons affected by leprosy should become a cross-cutting issues. And we want to see more and more government people coming and talking on forum like this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pradeep, and uh, yeah, appreciate your presentation on behalf of Dr. Catherine, and certainly the support and involvement of the UNDP program from Laos PDR. Please uh, pass our wishes on to Dr. Catherine for a quick recovery from her illness. Uh, our final speaker today is Mr. Amar Timulsina from Nepal. Mr. Timulsina is a person who has experienced leprosy. He is a member of the ILAP advisory panel of women and men affected by leprosy and serves as vice chair and president for international relations for IDEA International, which is the International Association for Integration, Dignity and Economic Advancement. Mr. Timulsina, Amar, you're welcome. Uh, we are running short of time, so if I could ask if you could keep strictly to time, that would be really appreciated. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Prince, for, for this wonderful opportunity. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. As a person who has experienced Hansen's disease, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to be part of this event. I would like to begin by saying that I am so glad to have this opportunity to participate in such a glorious meeting with wonderful people around the globe. I must express how happy I am that despite being a male, participating in this meeting entirely about women. In my view, the issues related to women must be heard by men because men are often responsible for this issue. I am sure your valuable thoughts will definitely help men change their attitude towards women. And I hope these types of discussions will continue as a good practice in the days ahead. Today, I will speak first of the situation in my own country, then I will present some suggestions on initiatives to support women internationally. It is, it is my opinion, women affected by leprosy in Nepal are more prone to discrimination than men. I would like to cite as an example, the marriage system in Nepal. In society, women are expected to play a subordinate submissive and more conservative gender role. This also applies to marriage. Due to the extreme gender discrimination caused by stigma related to leprosy, a man affected by leprosy can marry a woman who has not had the disease. While the reason <coughs> stigma related to a man affected by leprosy can marry a woman who has not had the disease. While the reverse is very rare, a man who has never had leprosy rarely marries a woman affected by the disease. In Nepal, the current law states that if a spouse is affected by leprosy, then the other spouse can file for divorce. The discriminatory law violates people's human rights and is a clear example that discrimination is still active. Rosta Fall, this has put a woman in danger of losing her husband only because she was diagnosed with leprosy. In the context of Nepalese society, women cannot go against their spouse so filing a case against the husband is extremely difficult. To counter this situation, the best tool I believe is educating women. It is important for women to understand the fact that their rights have been violated. They should 
seek help to identify that they have been abused or deprived of their rights. Equally important, women need to be familiar with legal provisions as laws do not discriminate in terms of gender. Additionally, it is important to ensure that women are capable of earning an income because in the context of developing countries like Nepal, only male, only male family members are expected to support families. If we could empower women to become income earners, there will be a drastic change in the perspective of people, which will in turn largely help reduce stigma and discrimination. Here are my perspectives regarding the international situation and future initiatives. First, I'd like to read the following quote. In 2003, IDEA gave me a platform to come out of my jail, to come out of the burden of secrecy in my heart so that they, I cannot forget. I too started giving counseling, especially for women. Nevis Mary reflecting on IDEA India's first women's empowerment workshop. IDEA has focused on the unique issues of women since the first in international women's conference held in Seneca Falls, Newark, nearly 20 years ago. Here, women from Japan, Nigeria, Korea, Brazil, Suriname, Hawaii, Nepal, Ghana, and Trinidad and Tobago came together to share their experiences in a supportive environment. It was the first time that many had spoken publicly about their experience. While almost all were physically impacted by leprosy, the unseen emotional anguish that many felt impacted women far more than any disability they had. These courageous women laid the foundation for future programs supporting women. National Women's Empowerment Workshops were held in countries including India, Brazil, and Nepal. In one state in Brazil, women's peer networks were formed where women came together to support each other while working on saving projects so they could become economically independent. In a few states, in Nigeria, agreements were made with the Federal Ministry of Women's Affairs and Social Development for economic projects, especially to support women. Additionally, women have participated as equals in international forums, including sessions organized by the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights in 2009, WHO meeting on developing guidelines for strengthening participation of persons affected by, by leprosy in leprosy services in 2010 and International Leprosy Congress over the past 25 years. In submitting critical points for inclusion in the UN principles and guidelines for the elimination of discrimination against persons affected by leprosy and their family members, IDEA researched and referenced the UN Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women to ensure that women's issues were effectively addressed in the guidelines related to leprosy. There are three areas where IDEA plans to strengthen its efforts to support women. First, at the beginning of April, in response to COVID-19, IDEA began to host semi-monthly gatherings for persons affected by leprosy to provide an informal platform for people to connect with each other under these difficult circumstances and share how they, their families and communities are doing. Occasionally, there is a guest presenter who speaks on relevant topics, including medical issues, mental well-being, and human rights. While IDEA facilitates the administrative components of the gathering, people with first-hand experience with the disease moderate the gathering, suggest topics for discussion, and in partnership with IDEA, facilitate the planning process. Based on what IDEA has learned through these gatherings, we would like to suggest a similar platform for women. To establish this International Women's Forum, we would create an advisory committee of women who have experienced leprosy to ensure effective participation. The committee would suggest and prioritize topics to discuss and details such as meeting format. Most importantly, the committee would discuss how to reach more women, particularly those in more remote areas and women with limited access to technology. Though this forum, women could connect with other women to share their experiences and feelings. They will also learn from each other how to address challenges in their own community and derive strength in knowing they would not be alone in doing so. Coming together in an international platform will also strengthen women's advocacy efforts globally. We feel that it is important to create an independent and accessible 
space for women. And it is our hope that other international organizations will support idea in this initiative and in time ensure it is a sustainable platform. Second, most recently, IDEA had planned a women's empowerment workshop to be held in India to identify challenges faced by women, foster the development of a women's peer network and identify new leaders in that country. While unfortunately, this has been postponed due to COVID-19. This delay will be an opportunity for IDEA to reassess the content and format of the workshop to make it more effective and incorporate issues raised on the International Women's Forum. Lessons learned from this workshop will be applied to conducting similar workshops throughout India and in other countries. We will also look at how to conduct workshop remotely as a way to reach more women. Third idea, which is an NGO in so, an special consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations, will identify opportunities to increase women's participation in UN bodies such as UN, UN Women and the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs Division for inclusive social development. This includes opportunities for education and participation at both the international and local levels. As these bodies have a multidimensional approach addressing issues such as economic empowerment, ending violence against women and social inclusion for persons with disabilities and individuals marginalized from society, Connections through these forums with other women facing the same challenges will strengthen advocacy efforts in local communities nationally and around the world. Thank you all for letting me put my thoughts in this wonderful platform. Thank you for bringing the direct voices of people who have experienced Hansen's disease. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Amar. Really appreciate uh, the, the work that IDEA is doing, both globally and in Nepal. And, and thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, everyone, we are running late. I would like to invite uh, Henrietta Davis Roy from DPI Global, uh, DPI and the Global Chair of DPI, if she would make a comment now. So we would like to invite you, uh, Ms. Henrietta, to the floor now. Thank you very much. Are you hearing me? We are, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for joining us for the event and to the panelists for great insights. We hope we can all take back something from this event and support women with all disabilities access their rights to a dignified life. We also want to say the panelists, hearing their inspiring and personal stories by women affected by leprosy, challenges faced by women living with leprosy, it was heartwarming. And as women, we stand united in the fight against the stigma associated by persons suffering from leprosy. DPI wholeheartedly has committed its responsibility to be one of the advocates out there to seek justice and rights for these persons. Thank you all for joining this session on this special day the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Henrietta, for your words of encouragement. Uh, everyone, our meeting time has come to a conclusion and I acknowledge that we haven't managed to answer questions, but I did want to give our speakers the opportunity to share uh, their their what they were wanting to share. Uh, what I am proposing is that we have questions in the chat room, which we will uh, channel towards the panel and we will respond. We have contact details, so we will respond to your questions. Uh, we will do so that way. So as we conclude, I think that we have some excellent uh, discussion coming from our uh, panel. 
And certainly for me, some of the things that came out was firstly that the UN CRPD is the best framework we have to address some of these barriers. That Article 6 of the CRPD in particular uh, is very, very important. But generally from, from the, from the panelists, uh, the importance of education, the importance of education for girls and the challenges that lack of education and poverty do bring to women being able to access their rights under the UNCRPD. Uh, there, is, there is a lot here in, in, in what's been shared. These uh, will be available, this, this, uh, this event will be available for uh, and will be recorded and will be available at a later date. But I do want to thank at this point uh, our panelists. Alice has had to go to, off to another meeting, but Alice Cruz, uh, Lilibeth Everastis, Ma Maya Rananawi, uh, Jai Shari Kunju, uh, Catherine Pyong, who was represented by uh, Pradeep Bhagaval, and uh, Amar Timulsina. Uh, thanks also to Lorna, our captioner, and Veronica and Jana, our interpreters. Uh, thank you all for taking part in this meeting. Uh, I hope that you have uh, enjoyed the contributions of our panel and I wish you all a very good day. Thank you and goodbye.